everyone and welcome back to Being Bethany. Now, like always, before we get into today's video, please hit that subscribe button, join the community of Small Steppers and help us get to 100 subscribers. That would be really, really awesome. So firstly, how is everyone? Are you having a good week? I really hope you are. I'm back with another video last week, you know, getting back into the swing of things. And this week, I want to bring to you what I have learned about social media and my mental health. Now, why I've decided to do that topic is a few videos ago, at the beginning of April, I set my April goals. Now, I'm here to be real to you all. Did I complete them? No. Did I give it a really good attempt? Yes, I did. However, I did discover that something was really holding me back, and that was my use of my phone and social media. Now, one of my goals was to try and come off my phone and social media before bed and in the morning, like I said, it's been a bit of an iffy one, but I could be really down on myself and be like, I did not complete these goals. And you guys know, because I took a break, that I was suffering a lot with my depression. So firstly, what I would like to say is what I have discovered, please don't be too hard on yourself. It's why I preach small steps and I didn't take it myself. If one day I don't get the stuff done that I wanted to, instead of really catastrophizing about it, really beating myself up about it, and letting that spiral then into perhaps a bad week, I should just be like, you know what? Let's think about what I did do today, about all the things that I can be grateful for, and tomorrow's a new day. And I think I really noticed that in goal setting, is that if I fell off the wagon slightly, I was so quick to beat myself up about it, and so quick to be like, oh, I'm such a failure, other people can do this, blah, 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 why can't I? That it really just didn't help my mental health and didn't help me pursuing those goals. So that's a really top tip, is just if it doesn't happen that day, don't worry about it. To build a habit anyway, a new habit is gonna be hard. So if you fall off the wagon and you come back on, that's perfectly fine. And also if life gets in the way and you gotta take a step out from that, that's also okay. Also, I think some of my goals were slightly unrealistic for someone who really doesn't like exercise or movement that much, or not that I don't like it, but I just haven't really set a good relationship with it. To start to say I'm gonna exercise three times a week, I think was slightly unrealistic. I wanna have a bit more of a funner approach to exercise first, I think, and movement. I've had some suggestions from my boyfriend to maybe start yoga, and we actually watched a documentary about it, which I thought looked really cool, so I might do that, and if I do, I will let you know. Just so I find something that also helps with kind of that meditation aspect, which I have been doing, but again, didn't stick to every day. So just to find calmer ways of living is, I think, a bit more of a better goal at the moment. And then when I get back on with that, then I can look at okay, right, let's set myself this big fitness goal. But what I did notice was how much I use my phone, especially as a distraction. Now, I suffer from anxiety, and I think that's, I use that as my biggest distraction tool, not for the better. I will grab my phone instead of dealing with the awkward emotions that I'm feeling, and I will grab it and be like, oh, I'll just, you know, busy myself on that. And what will happen is I will lose time and I will, those feelings will still be there. And actually they'll be worse because I haven't achieved the things that I actually did want to, but I was just nervous about. So instead of working through that and attempting it and feeling achieved by however far I had come, I'm distracting myself and making myself feel worse because what I didn't realize as well is even if, and I'm gonna talk about pros and cons and separate it all out about social media, but even if I felt like I was supporting others or just wanted to see what everyone was up to, sometimes subconsciously, we're taking in messages to ourselves and comparisons and I think that's why I was feeling really worse, especially about my fitness goals. I follow a lot of people and a lot of people I know who I love are very into fitness. And that's great, but I think then it just makes me feel really rubbish about it, which is also not good because we're all different people and I haven't, unless someone's really honest about their journey, I haven't seen all the ups and downs as well. So yes, I guess I've babbled a bit. So let's get into what I have learned. So I wanna start with the pros first, because if you're watching this, this probably means that you found me on YouTube, which I guess is a form of social media, 
or you've seen my Instagram post about it, or you've seen my link shared on Facebook. So firstly, I would like to say that I really recognise the positives of social media because it connects me to you guys and I'm very grateful for that. So definitely this isn't a rant about how awful I think social media is because I'm very aware and I'm very grateful that I use that tool to connect with you guys and you guys watch my videos and support me, which I'm really appreciative of. So that's the biggest thing about social media is that we can stay connected with people and we can share. We can share the goods, the bads, we can share support to people. You can build communities and that's what I really want this channel to be, is building a community of small steppers, of people who like to praise everyone for everything that they're doing and a safe space to talk about mental health. I'd say being on social media for the last few years and why I felt inspired to start this channel was that I saw more and more people sharing about their own experiences, in particular with mental health, and I just thought how great that was for them people to feel less alone. Most people have phones, most people are connected on the internet. And especially with, with lockdown that's happened, oh my goodness, how nice that we can stay connected with people and we can see what people are doing and we can chat with people on our phones and, and all that jazz, we can send each other messages, we can like, we can support. That side, that real community feel is what's great about social media. I know friends who have made pages and built up new friends and new support systems through their social media. I mean, how awesome is that? We can ask each other questions. I know where I'm from. There's a community page on Facebook where everyone can ask, oh, did you see what happened here? Is anyone okay? Or big thank you to this person who came and helped me today when I was shopping and, and, and I, I fell over. Or, hey, just giving you a heads up that this is happening. Staying connected and showing that support is a great benefit of social media. And I think our world has learned to function with it. People build businesses and small bi small businesses especially. I think with the increase of social media and people maybe buying online, spreading that support and building those pages has helped people loads. People can now make a living from social media as well in, in, in the way of influencers. And I think when these things are done for the better and to spread love and to kindness, then I think that's such that is such a gift to us. I've had some lovely messages from people saying, you know, really nice things about this channel and that couldn't have happened without social media. So thank you guys for watching. It sounds like I'm signing off. Thank you guys for watching. Um, so yes, that's, that's a big, big pro. So now the cons in terms of mental health, and this is what I've learned. Now this is my own experience and I just wanted to share it with you in case you recognise a similar thing that's happening in your life. Now, like I said at the beginning, I feel like for me, with my anxiety, using social media a lot in excess really distracts from the present moment and distracts from how I'm feeling. And what will happen is I can feel it, is I'll have this anxiety about something, say it's a task I want to do, or something I know that's coming on later in the day that I have to do, and I get anxious about it. Now instead of doing things, either the task, or getting ready, or doing other things, what will happen is I'll reach for my phone, and I'll go, well I'll just, you know, check this, or I'll just watch a video. And my anxiety will we'll slip down, but it's still there. It's still humming away. It's just muted slightly, and I get lost in the scroll. So the biggest thing for me is I don't deal with my anxiety and I don't face that in that moment. I will use it as a distraction and not for the better. And then I think what happens is it increases my anxiety because I'm seeing so many good things and so many people achieving this and I'm doing that or do or pop up and ads, do you wanna work from home and, and do you wanna do this and do you wanna earn six figures? And what's happening, even if I don't realize it, is I'm comparing myself to people. And you really don't realize it, especially when it's, you know, your friends and stuff. Like I said, I love giving support to people. I love seeing what people are up to because I don't get to speak to everyone all the time. But I think, you know, if someone's saying they've smashed this fitness goal, this or that, this or that, I don't feel jealous. I just think it increases my anxiety without me realising. Because later I'll 
start thinking, you know, if I'm trying to get to sleep, well, I should have done this today and I should have done that and I haven't done this. Oh my goodness, you're such a failure. And it will spiral and I'll get really sad about it because I feel like I'm not achieving all these things. And I mean, in one respect, I'm not because this is another big con. I lose time. I spend hours on my phone sometimes in one go or in, in moments throughout the day all build up and I will lose time and I won't achieve the things that I want to do that day. And I'll be like, where's the day gone? Well, it's gone on my phone and I'm laughing about it because when I say it out loud, it sounds so ridiculous, but perhaps you have, have a similar thing and I'm not alone. Yeah, the biggest thing is, is it, I think it lowers your self-esteem. And oh, I saw great posts recently. Like, I, I feel quite self-conscious about my body sometimes. It's not perhaps where I would like it to be. People are doing some great things now. Like, they're showing, because I think we forget. Some people use their pages for lots of different things. And some pictures are more posed than others. Now, that's absolutely fine. But I, what, what I think is good to remember, and what other people have been doing, is posting their, their I guess, Instagram post with the reality, you know, the Instagram versus reality. And actually, that was quite eye-opening to me because the way you manipulate even your clothes or the angles can really make a difference to how you look. And for someone like me who perhaps, like I said, no, I do love my body, I do, but perhaps I think it's not the most conventional or it's not the slimmest. Seeing all these images all the time of all these posed pictures can be really damaging to you because you feel like I'm never going to get there or why am I not getting there or if you're really trying I mean I'm not really trying to do any sort of fitness at the moment so that's kind of fair enough but if you're really trying and you look in the mirror and you go it's just why is it not the same well because you're not posing for a picture you're looking at you and who you are is beautiful and all bodies are beautiful and and all bodies are perfect because they, they are what keep you going, you know? So I just think it's really important to remember, and some of you might already know this, and, and you might have had this battle with yourself. Or you might see lots of people, I know sometimes I'm at the age where I see lots of people buying houses or having children, getting married and all that stuff. And for someone who, little old me, is just plodding along on my little part-time job at the moment, you know, I'm looking, I'm applying all the time just to get something more full time. I do like my job as it is now, but I want more. So to see all those things, instant reaction is happiness. Well done you. But subconsciously, that's another one to add to the bank where it's like, ah, should I be like buying a house right now? Or should I be mm, getting proposed to? Don't worry, Matt, you don't have to <laughs> propose to me right now, but I'll use that as an example. And it can just always feel like you're not enough. And I talked about some books last week, and Matt Haig really talks about this in Notes on a Nervous Planet, is this world is kind of being designed to think that you never have enough or you lack something. And I just wanted to say that you never do. Who you are right now is enough. We all have to learn and grow and make mistakes, but you are enough. And what you're doing right now is enough, you know? I'm not making loads of money, but... I'm happy, I get to make videos for you guys and use my spare time doing that. I get to connect with people that I love. I'm still trying to achieve things, small goals that I've set myself. So I think the biggest thing for me and all these little points I've said kind of, I guess, go into each other is be mindful of the things that you're consuming, of what you're seeing. If it makes you feel good, that's great. If it makes you feel rubbish, then just be mindful of that. See if it's something that you need to limit. Also, I think there's a lot happening in our brain when we look at social media for a long time that we're not really aware of. I'm now starting to become more aware that it increases my anxiety and perhaps lowers my self-esteem. When I use it in excess, and I will be talking about things to improve, but this is me, I mean, literally scrolling for ages. Because like I said, we can use social media as a great support system to give support to others, have it back, to like. I love all that stuff. And I love seeing what my friends are doing, especially, and just seeing really nice photos of family and all that stuff. I love that. More often than not, we only see the good bits on social media. So we don't know what someone else is going through. And when we don't know what has taken 
them to get to that point. You know, if it is a fitness goal, they probably work blimmin' hard for it, is, is the first thing. And they've probably had days where they've gone, I don't wanna do that anymore. If you find that it's a tool that is damaging your mental health and making you feel not so good about it, you've got to be so, so careful of that. And I have to have a big talk with myself now about my use of social media and scrolling on my phone. Because I think it's, it's damaging to me because I'm not getting things out and I'm not living in the present moment. Like, who wants to spend hours just on their phone up in their bed when there's like sun shining outside, I'm not getting out in nature. And also games on my phone. I think I'm gonna try and get rid of the games on my phone because I've become really addicted to them as well. And it's all right to play like a game now and again, but yeah, it's, it's not good. So, some action points to take away from this then would be firstly, like I said before, know who makes you feel good and know who doesn't. If you have to be more selective with your social media feeds, if that means you have to mute people, if that means that you have to unfollow people, then, then do it. Number two, limit your time. So whether that needs to be that you set a timer on your phone and you go, right, I'm, I'm taking a break and I'm having 10 minutes on, on social media, or I think you can get apps or perhaps it's built into your phone, I need to look into this which will monitor how much time you've used different apps. So again, set yourself a goal of I'm not gonna go over this amount of time. Be strict on it, otherwise that break of 10 minutes could turn into hours like sometimes has happened for me. Maybe also take a complete break from it. You know, whether that I'm not going on it all today or I'm not going on social media over the weekend. Now I really appreciate and I appreciate as well because I'm starting to do this with my own channel and social media feeds that more and more social media is becoming somebody's job or how to promote themselves. So if it's for business and it's working for you in that sense, then that's great. But again, if it's something that you can take a break from because you feel like it's really damaging to you, then set that goal as well. Also think, that's the reason to my next point, why do I use it? Am I using it as an escape from things that I should be confronting? Or am I using it to connect with people? And if you're using it as an escape, that's okay. But again, how long is that escape for? And also just be mindful of where you're using it. You know, like I said, don't use it an hour before you go to bed and when you wake up, which I need to work on so badly, maybe make a deal of not using it at, at meal times and when you're talking to people. That's what I need to address. Why can't I be in that present moment? Why can't I sit with my feelings sometimes? And yes, it's scary and yes, anxiety sucks sometimes, it really does. But I'm using this as kind of a temporary band-aid and it doesn't really deal with the root stuff that's going on. So that's what I've really learned to sum up is that be mindful of why you're using social media. Because for me, it's a distraction from my anxiety. Spread the love, spread kindness on social media. Please, if you're getting any bad sort of comments or hate, you can report them or just try not to engage too much with it. And don't take it for that's what people think about you because it, it really, really isn't. And the what people think about you is is who cares about you that's what should matter so yes i just wanted to share that with you because my next goal is this this phone which i am using now ironically for my notes but this phone i need to get off of it i hope you have a lovely week i hope you have a great day thanks for watching guys i really appreciate it also i would like to do a q a soon so if anyone has any questions that they would like to ask about mental health, about my own experience, if you just want to know, I don't know, a fun fact about me or something. I've never done a Q&A before. So make sure you comment down below or message me on Instagram or on Facebook, if you have me on Facebook. And yeah, I'd really like to do that soon because I just think that would be fun. I feel like a proper YouTuber then, I think. I hope you have a lovely week. I hope you have a lovely day. You are awesome. You are enough. You are amazing. I love you very much and I'll see you very soon. Bye. That's very <laughs> uh, Sometimes sublimin sublimin I'm just gonna check my notes. So I think the biggest thing for me is I 
hope you have a lovely week. I hope you have a lovely feel like I rambled in this video. It had some structure, but um, maybe I've gone off on tangents. 